Welcome to Hacking with Python 2, Unix Password Cracker. Every video will have all slideshows, files and code available in the description. First of all, some preamble. You must have a basic understanding of Python, otherwise this will probably be pretty confusing. My Python beginner series should be enough to get you up and running. This program requires a Unix platform, like Linux, as we'll be using the Unix crypt library. If you're adamant on using Windows, you'll have to find a port of the crypt library to follow along. So how does the Unix tracker work? Well, the Unix systems used to store all the user's information in a password file, in a directory which was accessible by all users. The file contained the usernames, passwords, the user ID on the system, and the home directory. The passwords in the file were encrypted using the Unix crypt function, so they couldn't be read by human eyes. There are two key parts to the crypt function, being the key and the salt. The salt is the most important part. The Unix eh, encryption system stores the salt used to determine the hash algorithm as the first two characters of the hashed key, meaning it was possible to know what algorithm was used. This means we can take the salt from the hashed password and encrypt our words from our dictionary and see if the results match. If it does, we've found the correct password. So let's start creating our program. Be sure to grab the passwords.txt file and the dictionary.txt file from the link in the description, as our program will use these words in the dictionary to try and match it with the hashed passwords. So let's set up our program. We're going to need a main function and a test pass function. So if we have a look in my directory here, I have a dic the dictionary.txt file and I have the passwords.txt file. Okay, so if we open up the passwords.txt file, passwords.txt, we'll be able to see that there's two users on the system. Victim, which has an encrypted password with the salt KB, and it also has the home directory and such, and we have the root, which has the salt of FG in its encrypted password. Okay, so I'll exit out of this. And now let's start creating our program. So vim, I'm going to call at program crack.py. And we're going to need the crypt module, so I'll import that. So I've encrypted, uh, imported the encrypt uh, file uh, module, and now I'll define our test pass function. So our test pass function is going to test the current password that we have from the passwords file against all the dictionary words. So uh, the dictionary file has a bunch of words in it, and it'll go through every one of them and see if it matches the current password. So test pass function, and we're going to need two parameters. So crypt pass, which is the current uh, encrypted pa uh, hash password that needs to be found, and the dictionary, so dictionary name. Okay, so we need the salt from the encrypted password, which is the first two characters. So create a variable called salt, and we'll get the two first two characters from the crypt pass variable so crypt pass 0 to 2 and we'll open up our dictionary file so dict file open and open dname in read only mode and for each word in dict file read lines we're going to strip any new lines so word equals word dot strip backslash n so if there's any new lines at the end of our word we'll strip it because we don't need it we just need the word itself and then we're going to create uh, an encrypted word from the dictionary. So, crypt word. So, we're going to encrypt the current word that we're looking at. 
So we use the crypt module. So crypt dot crypt. And in the in the crypt function, it takes two parameters, which is the word and the salt. So the salt determines the algorithm to encrypt it with. And now that we've encrypted our word, let's check if it equals the uh, user's password. So if crypt word, oops, if crypt word is equal to uh, the crypt pass, then, oops, then we want to print out that we found the password. So do a little icon here. Oops, do a little plus icon. Because we've got something we want. Found password. And then we'll print out the word because we want to know what it is. So word. And do a backslash n at the end. Make it look nice. And we return because we don't need to keep checking for passwords because we've already found it. So return. And now back after our for loop, if it goes through the whole for loop and doesn't find a password, then we want to print out that it failed. So put a negative icon. Quotes. So password not found will do. Backslash in on that as well. And we we'll return. And now let's define our main function. So def main. And we need to open up our pass file, our passwords file. So we'll call a variable pass file. And we'll open the passwords dot text in read only mode. And then for each line in that, in pass file, read lines, we're going to check if there's any colons in the line. So if there's a colon in line, then then we want to uh, actually try and decrypt a password. So grab the user. So if you remember from our passwords file, the user is the first thing in in uh, on each line. So user equals line dot split. So we use split to split up that one line, and we're going to split it by the colon character. Because if you have a look at the passwords dot text file, you'll notice that uh, each new item is split by a colon. And because it's the first thing, it's the zeroth item inside the file. Okay, and now we're going to need to grab the encrypted password. So, crypt pass is equal to line dot split. We're splitting by the colon, and this time we're grabbing the second thing, so the first element, even though it's the second thing. Zero is the first, one is the second. And then we're going to strip any um, spaces because we don't want spaces in our in our string. So strip strip and stripping any spaces. Okay so now we've got our crypt pass uh, and we've got a user. We'll print out star in this one cracking password for and then we'll put our user on the end user so cracking password for this user and then we call our test pass function so test pass and we pass through our crypt pass and we also pass through our dictionary file so dictionary dot text and then we're done
So that's our main function written. So we'll write our if so if underscore name underscore is equal to main. Then we run main. Okay, so there we go. We've got our program written. So let's, let's save this and let's try running it. So Python crack dot py and oh, we've got an error. Okay, so what was the error? Ah, bug it up. In Whereabouts of it? Script. It's supposed to be strip. There we go. So word dot word. The word equals word dot strip rather than script. Screwed up there. Um, save that again. Um, we'll try running it again. And there we go. So cracking password for victim, found password Pokemon, and cracking password for root, found password admin. Okay. So, yay, it works. Um, but to use this every time, we'd need to open up the code and change the file locations every time. But we can fix this by allowing us to enter the file names as the arguments when we run the program with optpass. So, adding optpass. Optpass is a Python library that allows us to pass in arguments from the command line with ease. It also provides a usage if the users enter the wrong information. So let's add option passing to make our program more dynamic. So we uh, come back to our program. And we'll open it up again. We're going to start using another module. So we're using optpass. So import optpass. And note the different spelling of uh, pass. It's P-A-R-S-E. Okay, now we don't need to touch our test pass because that doesn't have anything different in it. It's always going to be past the dictionary and the file. However, our start of our program, we're going to need to initialize our parser to make sure we grab all the arguments from the command line. So let's create our parser. So p a r c equals opt pass dot option parser that's about right I think so yeah and then we need to write our usage so usage usage and put our percent program so it'll grab our program name and plus and we're going to have a dash f and that's going to be our password file uh, password file and we're going to have a dash d which will be our dictionary file so dictionary and then we'll close that off so we've created a parser, so let's set up our options. So parser dot add underscore option option and we want a dash f option which will be for our password file and the destination variable that we want to put it in. So dest equals p name and what type of da data we're expecting. So type is equal to string. And we also need the help. So if they muck up, we can give them help. So help equals specify password file. That seems like it's decent enough. And we'll add our dictionary option. So parser.add option. And we're passing in with a dash D this time. And the dest will make that equal to 
Well, we'll make that D name so we don't have to change anything else. Hit D name. And that's going to be also type string. And the help this time be specify dictionary file. Okay. Now, now that we've got our options, uh, we'll grab out our our uh, our parameters from the program. So, options is args, and we want to make that equal to parser dot pass uh, underscore args. So we're passing the arguments from our program into the um, parser. Okay, we'll do an if to make sure that the users actually input uh, options. So options dot p name equal to none. Or if options dot d name is equal to none then we want to print the usage so print oops print parser dot usage so this will print out a nice little uh, usage to the command line and we'll exit because we don't want the program to keep going after there's no um, password or dictionary file specified. But if they do enter stuff in, we have an else clause which will set p name to options dot p name and d name equals options dot d name and this has created our two variables so this will be our passwords file which is p name and our dictionary file which is d name so we go back down to the rest of our program and we change our pass file line so instead of putting in passwords dot text we just put in p name and we scroll down to test pass instead of passing in dictionary dot text we pass in D name, D name, and there yeah, we've created made our program a lot more dynamic, and we'll now to check that out. So we right quit. Now if we try and run our Python crack, it'll specify the usage for us. So the usage for this program is dash f, then a password file, and then dash d and the dictionary file. So let's try running it again. This time we'll pass in our passwords file, so passwords.txt oh, we need to add the dash f first though, dash f and then the passwords text so if we try to do that it'll spit, a, add a, spit out an error again because it also needs a dictionary file and if we do dash d and then dictionary.txt we get the program to run so that means we can pass in any passwords file and we can pass in any dictionary and the program will run and we don't have to change our program at all. Okay. This concludes our Unix password cracker. Uh, don't fear if you don't remember all of this. You can easily come back and rewatch this video to consolidate all of the information. If you have any questions and you can't find the answer after a quick Google search, feel free to leave it in the comments. Next we'll be writing a zip cracker using the same style of brute force attack. Thanks for watching.